Hello. So today I'd like to show you around the text editor that I use most of the time. This is CUDA text and it's a free software text editor, which you can download from uvviewsoft.com forward slash CUDA text. I'll leave a link in the video description. And once you're at the website, you just go to download and then click on this link here at the top, download latest release. And then just find the one that's for your operating system. Now this text editor is great. It can be extended with plugins. And because it's free software, that means the source code is available to be studied, changed and uh, redistributed. So you can make any changes you want, e even right down to the fundamental source code level. But if like me, you don't really want to be editing things at the source code level, you just want to get on with using your text editor, but you want to extend its functionality, then you can use plugins that are available. There are loads of plugins available, and there are also things called lexers, which basically allow CUDA text to recognize the syntax of different programming languages or different document formats. So this is kind of what it looks like when you first open it up. Let's add a few things to it. So I'm just going to the view menu. I'm going to add the sidebar. So we get this little sidebar here. I don't use that too much, but it can come in handy. I'll show you a few of its features in a moment. We'll add the side panel which I use all the time for going through projects and things like that. You can see a project tree here. And again, we'll look at some more things in that in a minute. There's also a mini map, which I find very useful. And that opens up on the right side here. There's nothing in there at the moment, but if we open a document such as an HTML file, we can see the mini map is populated and we can actually scroll around in there as well, just by clicking and dragging. So that's really useful. There's also a micro map, which is very handy if you're on a smaller screen. So that's just here. And let's hide the mini map so we can see the micro map more clearly. So the mini map has gone and we're left with the micro map, which is this tiny little bar here it is next to the scroll bar. So I don't use that one too much, but it's handy if you have a smaller screen and the uh, mini map takes up too much room. So this is usually how I have it set up when I'm working in here. There are, of course, other themes as well. So if we go to options and themes, we can try out some of the different ones. And you can mix and match the different parts. So we've got the UI on the left and the syntax highlighting on the right. So we can uncheck this box here to desynchronize them and then we can mix and match the UI theme with the syntax theme that we want. Okay, if we head over to the sidebar, there's a few different things we can go through here and these change slightly depending on which documents you have open and what you've got going on. The only one I really tend to use is the um, project view. It shows the directory you've got open and you can put projects in here by right clicking and selecting open project or selecting new project or you can drag a folder from your desktop to um, add it to this sidebar so let me demonstrate that so currently I've got this highs one in here let's find another one so we can add another project to this just by dragging and dropping from the file browser and there we have another project added and you can add as many as you want and then you can navigate through the files of the project here and they will be displayed in the uh, text editor window if they're text files. So another thing we have in the sidebar is a console window, which I haven't used. I believe this is a Python console. I'm not 100% sure. It's not something I use, but it may be useful to you. We can click the magnifying glass to bring up the text search option. So we can just type something in here and hit enter and it searches the document for that word. A faster way to bring that up is to hit control F on your keyboard. Now we can just close that by pressing escape. So another feature I use a lot combines the find and replace feature with the project browser. So I've got a project loaded in here and this is a C++ project. So there's lots of um, CPP and .h files so text files essentially and rather than searching and replacing words in individual files 
we can search for a word or a phrase in all of the files in a particular folder and replace those phrases if we want. I find many instances when this really speeds up my workflow. So let's go to the top of this tree. We could do this with any of the folders, but we'll go for the top one. We're going to right click on it, go down to selected directory and select find in directory. And then we'll look for a word. We'll look for Jack as in Jack audio. And then I'm going to change this drop down to project folder. And then I'm going to hit find. And the status at the bottom tells us how many files it's searched through and the percentage of the search and how many files it has to go. So now it's found all of the files that contain the word Jack. So it's found all the instances and we can click on these to uh, actually see the contents of the file and which line it's at. And we can close these up as well if we want to and collapse them or expand them. And if we click on them, it will actually open the file fully so we can go in there and edit it. If we wanted to replace the word Jack, where we have this replace with box, we could type in the word we want to replace it with. So maybe we'd replace it with port audio or something like that. And then over here, we would click replace and that would then go through all the files again. And this time it would replace that word and then save the files. So CUDA text can understand the syntax of loads of different formats of text documents. So here I've got an HTML document open. Here I have a fountain document. This is used for screenwriting. Here's a JavaScript one. And this is a task uh, to do list with their uh, checkboxes. CUDA text will detect the format of the document based on its extension. So if it's a HTML file, it'll load up with the HTML uh, Lexa loaded and that's what determines the syntax highlighting. You can change it though if you want to force it to use a different one just click down here in the status bar and you can select a different Lexa for it to use. So this can be handy if the file doesn't have an extension and you want to select a particular one or if you want to use a different Lexa to what CUDA text has decided to use. For example you might have a C++ file, let's just open one. So I've opened this header file and it's set to C++, but we might want to use C instead. So we can just change that to C. And in fact, CUDA text is clever enough that if we do open a header file, it will actually ask us if we want to use C or C++, but you may want to change that manually afterwards as well. So that's why it's handy to have this menu down here. Another feature I really like is we can have multi select and multiple cursors, which I find really useful. So if I just write out something and I'll just duplicate it a few times. So there's a few ways to access multiple cursors. The first way is to hold alt on the keyboard and then just click and drag down where you want the cursors to be. And now you have multiple cursors and can edit multiple lines at once. So I'm change that to this is a sentence. Another way we can do it is we can highlight a word we're interested in. You'll notice the other words highlight and that's because I have a plugin installed to do that. I'll show you that in a moment, but we can press control and D and it will highlight the next instance of the word and add it to the selection. So again, we get the multiple cursors. And with this plugin I have installed, I can press alt and F3 and it will select every instance of that word and add it to the selection. And again, I have the multiple cursors and can edit multiple lines at once. So let's have a look at plugins now. So we can go to the plugins menu, go to the add-ons manager and select install. And then that's going to load up and we have hundreds of plugins we can choose from. So some of these are Lexas, which we looked at earlier. And some of these are plugins that add various functionality and some are themes as well. So the plugin I was using to highlight the occurrences of a selected word can be shown if we go to the add-ons manager and then update and we see all the plugins I have installed. And it's this one here, highlight occurrences. The update add-ons window is also where we can update our installed plugins from. So you can see that the plain tasks plugin has a checkbox next to it. So that means there's an update for that one. So I could click update here to uh, trigger that update. Now, if you mainly use a text editor for something like HTML, then CUDA text has you covered with all the things you'll be used to, such as linting and 
things like Emmet for code expansion. So with Emmet, you can type a dot and then write a class name and it'll declare a div with that class name. So we'll just call it class name. And then you need a shortcut key to expand it. And I have that set up to control and uh, comma, but you could set that up however you like. And that will expand. And of course we can do it with an ID as well. So all the functionality you used to from other text editors when working with HTML, JavaScript, and CSS is available in CUDA text as well. So it makes it really easy to transition across to this. There are literally hundreds of features in CUDA text and it would take me several videos to go through even half of them. And I don't even use half of them. There are so many and my needs are quite simple. But a couple of other things I would like to show you is just the speed that CUDA text opens, which is one thing I really love about it. So let's just close it down for now. And if I just open it back up, there we go. It's open in an instant. And even these massive files are all still loaded as well. Those documents are still there. It's just really fast. And I love that. So another great feature is the community. If we go back to the website, there's a forum link here, and that will take us to the CUDA text forum. Now it's only a small community, but the community is really important. And if you need features that aren't there, you can ask for them on the forum and it's more than likely somebody will be able to implement that feature. Now, often people on the forum will ask for a small donation towards the development, and that helps fund the cost of producing this piece of software. So it's usually only a small, a small cost and um, it's well worth it. So there are actually a few things in here that I've um, commissioned. So there was this um, fountain syntax highlighter for screenwriting because it's something I use a fair bit. And so somebody produced this uh, plugin for me. And in fact, I'm making this particular video because I asked on the forum if somebody could make me a syntax highlighter and they said they would. And the donation they wanted was actually for me to spread the word about CUDA text and let other people know. So I thought that that was a very worthwhile reason to make a video. So get on the forum and ask for things if you need something or you find something's missing. So once you have plugins installed, they'll all be listed in this plugins menu. And this is where you can change various settings for them. So we're in this fountain document at the moment. So as I said, this is for screenwriting. So special syntax for um, generating scripts and screenplays. And if we go down to the fountain plugin, we can see there's some extra settings for it. So extract character dialogue, character lists, etc., and a preview in the browser. So if we click that, it will actually open up. A preview of how it will look when printed in uh, in my web browser. Another plugin I commissioned was the to do Lexa because I like to have a checklist of uh, projects I'm working on. And this is really handy. You press control enter and you can create a new task. And you set up a shortcut. Mine is control alt and D to mark the task as complete. And it puts a little timestamp at the end, or if I cancel the task, I press Alt and C and it cancels the task. So it's just another handy tool. And again, it's something I requested on the forum and somebody was able to provide that for me. Okay, I hope this quick overview of CUDA text and how I use it and the things I like about it is uh, helpful and informative to you. Please go to their website, uh, download a copy, try it out, see if you can fit it into your workflow. It's a really lightweight program, loads up super quick. And that's one of the things that attracted me to it because I've used some other text editors that are like this and they tend to become slow and bloated, especially when you load in lots of plugins. But CUDA text really, really snappy and fast, even when you handling large documents. So I'll leave some links in the video description below on YouTube. If you've got any questions or comments, uh, leave those below the video or ask on the CUDA text forum. Check it out play around with it, and let me know if you enjoy using it. As always, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.